Hello, welcome to our beginner's animation course on Curious.com. My name is Michael and I'll be guiding you through this course. Thanks for joining us. In this first part of this animation course, we really want to set up Maya to be able to animate. Maya is a very robust application. It's able to animate and model and do special uh, particle effects and all sorts of different things. And so you're able to set up your scene to optimize your user interface for whatever aspect of Maya you're working in. And since we're going to be working in the animation area of Maya, we can set up our user interface to more optimally display the animation controls and such. So first, we'll go to Display, UI Elements, and we can click this little dotted line to break off the UI Elements menu. And then I'll check for Time Slider and Range Slider. Both of these two uh, UI elements are definitely necessary in animation. So Time Slider and Range Slider are the main two UI elements we're turning on, and you may already have them on in your scene. So let's look down at our new UI elements that I've added into my scene. First we have the Time Slider. If you look here we have this uh, kind of a ruler looking uh, interface with these dashed lines and numbers going across measuring at this point from 1 all the way up to 120 and these are all frames within our timeline so at frame 1 we have this line here we can click and drag through here to highlight different frames along our time slider and eventually when we start doing some actual animation we'll be using the time slider quite a bit now above that is the range slider. What this does is it controls how many frames that we're displaying at any time in our time slider. You'll see now we're displaying 1 through 120 down here in the time slider. And in the range slider, this gray bar here, the number at the far left of the, this sliding bar is well, 1 through 120. So whatever this bar is displaying within the range of frames available is the number of frames that are displayed in the time slider. So in front of the, the range slider we have these two number boxes and they both right now say 1. And on the far right side of this sliding area we have these two numbers and the first number here says 120 the second number says 200. And so what this means is that we have 200 frames available within this animation by default. And what we're actually seeing is frames 1 through 120 in the timeline. Beyond the frame 120 we also have 80 more frames that we're not displaying. And that's because the range slider here, and you click and, as I click and drag this gray box around, you can see how the timeline changes. The range slider is telling us that we're only displaying frames 1 through 120 of the 200 frames that we have to work with. So this just simply allows us to change which area of the timeline that we're displaying within the time slider. Hopefully that makes sense. You can see as I click and drag this bar back and forth, and if I let go, this number here is no longer 1. It now is the first frame that the time slider bar is displaying, which is frame 46 in this case. So the first box tells you the first frame that's available to use, which is frame 1. The second box over here tells you the last frame available to use, which is at frame 200. And then the middle boxes here tell you the first and last frame being displayed of that range. So you can type in numbers here as well and change those values. If you wanted more than 200 frames, if you wanted, say, 500 frames, you could type that in and hit enter. You can see how my range slider bar here changes and becomes much smaller because we're displaying a smaller percentage of that entire range of frames that is available to us. But I don't want to get too far ahead though, I'm just explaining what the UI elements are and how they work. We can click and drag this all the way to the left to keep it at frame 1 through 120 for now. So that's our range slider and our time slider. And over here we have a couple other things. I have here animation layer character sets. Those two elements of the interface are a bit more advanced than we're going to be getting into for our beginners course. This right here is the auto key frame button. You can turn it on or off. For now let's leave it off so we're not automatically setting keyframes because I want to make sure you understand how keyframes work 
before you're just having Maya create them for you. I want you to know how to create them yourself. Next to that is this little icon that looks like a little orange guy running away from a big gear or something. That leads us to our animation preferences, which we're actually going to get to in just a minute. Below that you'll see we have our playback controls here. And this is very similar to what you might see on a DVD player remote control or something. You have play forward, you also have play in reverse, or rewind if you will. Uh, you can skip back to the mo previous closest keyframe, or skip forward to the next closest keyframe where you are in the timeline. Now, a keyframe versus a frame. Those are two different things, but I want to get to that soon, but I want to just explain what the UI elements are first before we dive into all the terms and terminology. So for now, just know you can play forwards and play backwards. And if I hit the play button right now, you can see how my little tick mark in the time slider starts moving on its own. It's playing through the animation from the beginning to the end, and then it's repeating. You can see now my play forward icon has become a red square indicating a stop button. So I can hit, click this to stop the animation playback and play in reverse if I wished, like this, and click stop again. Now if you want to go back to the beginning of the animation, you can click and drag on the timeline over here to frame one, or this far left button in our playback controls will go to the first frame of the displayed animation frames. So if we're at frame 89 or, or whatever, we hit this button, it'll kick us back to frame one. The mirror of that, we have the go to the end of the animation range, with this button here, we can go to frame 120. So frame 100 to frame 120 very easily with these two buttons. And then play forward or play backwards and stop. The other buttons again we'll get into more as we dive more into what all these elements are and what they mean. So now that we have our UI elements displayed to work with, next we need to control how the animation will play back. So let's click on our little guy running from the gear click that button and now we get to our preferences window and it starts us in the time slider section in the categories list and under playback you can see here we have a playback speed and yours may be different than mine but that's okay but right now mine is set to real time 24 FPS now FPS stands for frames per second frames per second or the FPS uh, value is very important when it comes to animation in general, not just in Maya. 24 frames per second is typically what you would see in such formats as a feature film. A uh, film you see in the movie theater, if it's on a big you know, reel of film being displayed on the screen, is typically a 24 frames per second playback speed. Something like a video game, they're usually running between 30 and 60 frames per second. Uh, the same for online video, like on YouTube or whatever, it can run 30 to 60 frames per second. So it just depends on what you're doing and what format you're working for to uh, tell you what playback speed you want. So for the sake of this, this course, we're going to change our playback speed to 30 frames per second. So right now if I click on this pull down menu, we have real time 24 frames per second, and below that we don't have any other option for a 30 frames per second setting. So it's 24 frames per second here, 12 frames per second for half speed, or 48 frames per second for twice as fast. So we don't want any of those options because we need to change the base value which is 24 frames per second. So let's go over here to the settings category within the preferences window and here we have our working units and we have linear which is based on centimeters by default, angular, which is based in degrees by default, and then time, which you see here is set to film, 24 FPS. So we're not going to be working in film, so let's click this and change this value to instead be NTSC 30 FPS, 30 frames per second. Now if you click and drag through here, you can see there's lots of different settings you could choose. You could even go all the way up to 6,000 frames per second if you really wanted to. Uh, not for this, <laughs> not for this course. But NTSC 30 frames per second. Now you'll see there is also a PAL 25 frames per second. PAL 
is a European format for television and such. So depending on where you are in the world, you might have a different format, a different FPS value based on what you're doing. But again, for the sake of this course, let's stick to NTSC 30 frames per second. Click that. We'll go back to our time slider and now you'll see my playback speed is real time 30 FPS. And that's what we want. So I click save and that closes the preferences window. Now because I changed the frames per second, what used to be 24 frames in a second is now 30 and so our values have become decimal points over here. You'll see that I have a 1.25 frame. Let's go ahead and change this to a base value of 1 and then I can click and drag my little time slider handle here to frame 1. So now we have our Maya scene set to 30 frames per second and our user interface elements displayed for our time slider and range slider. And that's really all we need to do right now to set up our scene to get ready for this course. Next time we'll be talking about more of the terms we're going to be using in this course, such as frames versus keyframes and, and using the time slider and range slider to set keys. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.